Hi everyone, welcome to day 3 of the 10 on 10 series. Before I start with this, let's quickly revise the homework of the last class where I asked you the sterilization of the scope. So all the scopes are going to be cleaned with Cydex or glutaraldehyde except for two that is arthroscope and ureteroscope which is going to be sterilized by plasma sterilization. Now starting with day 3 and day 4 of the image based series. So two days, 10 spotters of pathology, 10 of microbiology and this is going in sync with the recently conducted image based class that I had one day each for path and micro. So now it's going to be a mini test and a few more images which I wish to revise. So let's get going with the 10 images of pathology for the day. The first one is an entire flashcard of the pigment accumulations from general pathology. So of course they come with the history and the first one is an old age or a senile pigment in an 83 year old man. I guess you know the answer is lipofuscin. The word lipo tells us that this is going to be derived from something to do with lipid. So the special stain is going to be oil red O and from fuscin we have learned that it is acid fast that is why ZN stain positive. But how did I identify from the photo over here because the color is characteristically brown as you can see and apart from that I can also notice it is present right next to the nucleus. Even when I look at the electron microscopic image over here this is the nucleus and it's present around the nucleus so remember the two buzzwords that it's going to be brown in color and it is perinuclear moving on to the next history where there's a history of hemorrhage a lot of bleeding that could be blood loss that could be road traffic accident some internal bleeding so whenever blood is there iron will always come and the pigment coming from iron is going to be hemosidrin look at the word the hemo word tells us hemorrhage and the sidro word tells us iron special stain for iron is pearls or prussian blue stain and the blue color is obvious in the image above which also means that any kind of iron overload condition like a hemochromatosis mentioned the stain is going to be the same pearls or prussian blue coming to the third history where we have a patient who's had alcohol consumption in excess or chronically and there's a right upper quadrant pain so that's the location of the liver and alcohol can cause fatty liver so of course we are dealing with fat accumulation over here and fat has two stains which are obvious in the photos below one is a red color and one is a black color stain these stand for oil red o and sudan black b and i think it's obvious that oil red o has given a red color and sudan black b has given a black color well i can see another red and black on the side but that's why the history is so important because I could have thought of these to be oil red O and Sudan black B but then the history said hyperparathyroidism so I'm not thinking of fat what am I thinking of instead is that when I, there's a history of increase in parathyroid hormone metabolically that is going to increase the calcium level so this is calcification and to be precise this is metastatic calcification so what are the two stains for calcium which can give such colors the first one is going to be one cosa which we had studied cosa gives a color color to calcium as you can see and the next one is alizadin red s which of course is given a red color and don't forget the pyq that if you want to stain minute amounts of calcium for minute or zarasa calcium you're using alizarin red s now moving on to the next and this is not many spotters this is just once it's one flash card the second topic that we have today is going to be based on a lot of endocarditis where you'll identify them on the basis of their vegetation the first one of course is going to be the rheumatic heart disease which is named after the fact that the vegetations are extremely small and warty so not to forget that this is caused by the bacteria group a beta hemolytic streptococcus which is nothing Thing but streptococcus pyogenes and a very important question so small warty vegetations moving on to the next one where i can see extremely large and bulky vegetations which are characteristically seen in cases of infective endocarditis and they are so large and bulky they may break and if they break they are very well capable of causing embolization not always may or may not coming to the third one they are small vegetations but they are very fragile these are seen in non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis thrombotic so there's a thrombus and if there's a thrombus there's going to be embolism and that means that these are definitely plus they are very friable they are definitely going to embolize and spread to different parts of the body and the other name of nbte is merantic endocarditis the fourth one i can see the vegetations on both the surfaces so if they are seen on both the surfaces i will think of libman sachs endocarditis however if one of them is asked then it is going to be the lower surface more common than the upper surface but ideally it's the both and if you rearrange the terms the disease in which this is seen lse is seen in sle so the second flashcard is also done the third and the fourth are to do with brain disorders the first history given to you is of dementia and you first and foremost will always think of alzheimer's disease so are those the pictures of 
have Alzheimer's disease? I hope you said yes. The first photo that we have is going to be the beta plaques. What are these beta plaques or neuritic plaques made up of? They are made up of A beta type of amyloid. So A for the amyloid and beta for the beta plaques. The next we see are photos of these flame-like cells and these are known as the neurofibrillary tangles. These are made up of the classical tau protein and I think we all know that Alzheimer's shows you tau protein accumulation is a very famous PYQ. These are going to appear as neurofibrillary tangles. The third one where I've made Shah Rukh Khan alongside is something to do with Hero. So this needle-like body is a Hirano body and Hero will always be famous for doing acting. So Hirano body is going to be made up of actin. So that is what is Alzheimer's disease and all the different images that can come with it. Now when you get a history of another neurodegenerative disease of tremors and abnormal gait, you have started to think of Parkinson's disease. You know Parkinson's disease is a disorder in which there is a decrease in the dopaminergic neurons. If there is a decrease in the dopa and the dopaminergic neurons, one pigment accumulation is also going to suffer and that is melanin. That is why when we look at the substantia nigra of the brain, normally it is supposed to be extremely brown because of melanin but now because in Parkinson's that is not formed, we see a pain substantia nigra the brownish color has somewhere become lesser and the body that you see accumulating is known as the Lewy body which is a circular body as you see over here and the composition of the Lewy body is going to be the alpha syn nuclein that's another PYQ as well moving on to the next one is an entire list of ovarian tumors which a lot of you had uh, you know requested that although I had given this as bonus slides in the previous PDF of the images but you said that ma'am why not discuss so here we are I'll start with the easiest one which I know no one is ever getting wrong is going to be teratoma because you could see the tuft of hair in the ovary over here maybe there would be a tooth or there would be some other organ it's a teratoma but what I want you to focus on is this is this narrow projection over here a nipple like projection what is this? This is known as the Rokitansky protuberance and why is this important? Because maybe this is the area where cancer is hiding because it's a solid area. I don't know what's underneath. So I'll have to cut it with a scalpel and look at it that does this have a cancer hiding in it? So that is done. Let's go start from the starting now. What is this ovarian or testicular tumor where if you look at the cells, they are not looking like the usual pink cytoplasm but rather the whitish cytoplasm. So all the cytoplasm if you look is white similar to fried eggs. As soon as I say fried egg in the ovary you're thinking of dysgerminoma and testes you're thinking of seminoma keep telling me the tumor markers alongside so seminoma dysgerminoma it is going to be plap as well as ldh moving on to the next one this will always come with the history of a three four year old child with an ovarian tumor and you know at that age it is always something to do with yolk sac tumor and what you see microscopically are the schiller duval or glomeruloid body glomerulus like so means in the center there's going to be a blood vessel i can see the red color blood and the blood vessel in the center Center. Apart from that, I will see two rows of these tumor cells. Can I highlight them? Yes, there is one row over here and then there's another row over here. So what are they separated by? They are separated by a space. This is known as a Schiller duval or a glomeruloid body seen in yolk sac tumor and we all know the tumor marker is alpha fetoprotein. The next one is to do with lots of hemorrhage and necrosis. You can very well see that this is a case of choriocarcinoma where you are visualizing lots and lots of hemorrhage and necrosis. The tumor marker without a say is going to be beta HCG. So the next ovarian tumor has been the one that was asked recently in the INICT exam where you were given a history of a postmenopausal female and at this age of 50 plus you don't expect estrogen levels to be elevated but they are. So what are you going to be thinking of over here? We would be thinking of a granulosa cell tumor. Reason being that from the ovary now what is this granulosa cell tumor is there. So what is it releasing? It is releasing a lot of estrogen. What do you think estrogen will do as an impact to the endometrium? It always causes endometrial hyperplasia and that is the reason that this patient will come to you with bleeding PV. Do you expect that in a postmenopausal woman? Of course not. So that is granulosa cell tumor and now comes the five questions that all of you have to answer for me. Number one, which are the bodies that I have shown in the image above along with one special type of nucleus which I have given you a hint by drawing. Apart from that you have to tell me the tumor marker which was asked in the recent INI set. There is a CD marker which you always remember as the age of the granny and I hope you remember that story from the video lectures. And lastly, what is the gene mutation? So of course a lot for you to write but I'm making you do this because I want you to remember it and then answer it because I'm expecting this in the exam. So to end it with a hematology image, we have some needles which are always important, some which I taught you a few days back and had other that I've added over here. The first one is the bone marrow aspirate needle. The one with the side screw over here is known as the Salas needle. The one with the longitudinal screw is referred to as Klima needle and both of these are for bone marrow aspirate. 
on the other hand we have another one which is going to be for bone marrow biopsy and that is the jamshidi needle which is identified as a t shaped needle and very important for you to know for the exam of course these are important for the exam without a say but please note on bone marrow aspirate you are going to get liquid blood like material from the marrow so the staining procedure that is done for bone marrow aspirate slides is going to be the romanovsky stain on the other hand bone marrow biopsy biopsy always means a tissue sample so you are going to be doing the typical pink and blue of pathology that is hematoxylin and eosin i hope you benefited from these i didn't count exactly 10 but we finished all the things that we couldn't probably discuss including ovarian tumors in the previous image based session so that's done and you have your homework ready for the day which are five questions to do with granulosa cell tumors and i will be looking out for the answers well i'll be meeting you tomorrow with four day of this series where we'll discuss 10 image spotters of microbiology and i'm going to keep all the 10 image spotters of culture media because bacteriology and culture media as i've seen students are struggling a little more with it so i think it is important to revise so see you very soon in the next session